In this video, I'm going to be walking you through a very, very simplified approach to how you read a CT scan of the abdomen as if this were your very first scan that you, you're opening up. Whether or not you're a med student or an intern or a nurse, whatever it may be, this video is going to walk you through that. Later videos I'll have are going to be walking you through a little bit more detail. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com. And before we get started, this case was from casestacks.com, which is a repository of cases that can walk you through whether or not it's x-ray, CT, or MRI. Uh, it's a very good practice website, so be sure to check it out. I'll link it down in the description. But essentially, what we're going to be showing you is, you know, when you're first opening up a CT scan, it's oftentimes it's fairly anxiety provoking because there's so many different organs in the abdomen compared to, let's say, the lung. Clinicians oftentimes have a lot more comfort in terms of reading a CT scan of the chest, whereas the abdomen, they're much more wary of. So the very first thing, and this is not how I look at it, but I think it gives you a good approach, is you can open up the coronal image. Um, and so the coronal image, clinicians oftentimes are much more comfortable with this because this is how you look at a KUB, this is how you look at a chest x-ray. It's the plane that you're more familiar with. Rather than an axial scan, it requires a lot of imagination and rotation in your head. So the first thing is just kind of looking at the major organs. This is going to be our liver. This right here is going to be our pancreas. This is going to be our spleen, our kidneys, and down you'll find our ureters. If you follow these guys right down here, those are your ureters. They'll eventually lead up to the bladder um, if we were to follow it close enough. Down all the way down here is going to be our bladder. And then these are going to be all of our major vessels. So this is going to be our SVC and into our iliacs and bifurcating. And then on the left is going to be our aorta and that's going to be bifurcating as well. All these small loops are going to be our bowel. So down here, the ones that kind of course on the outside. So the most external ones and as well as this one that comes across here, that's going to be all of our colon. So down here is our colon, and if we go at the very bottom, we're also going to see our rectum down here. And it'll be a little bit easier, in my opinion, to see it on axial, but this is going to be our descending colon, our splenic flexure. It's going to go into our transverse colon, which typically kind of makes a little bit more linear approach, but that's okay here. And then this is going to attach to our hepatic flexure, down to our descending colon. Um, and then we're going to attach where our ilium is going to attach right here. Right, so this is going to be our cecum and our ascending colon. Right, so those are our major bowel structures. And also, obviously, anything central is going to be more of our small bowel. Typically, so if I, I can walk you through here, this is going to be our stomach. This is the first portion of the duodenum. This is our second portion of the duodenum. This is our third and then our fourth portion of the duodenum. Then I'll go into the jejunum, which will, you often see in KUBs, kind of loops around here, like in the left lower quadrant, left upper quadrant, kind of go back and forth, and the ilium kind of lies in this general area. And then I forgot to mention, it's going to be your gallbladder right here. So that's kind of giving you the lay of the land in terms of a coronal image. And I think people are oftentimes a lot more comfortable with this. The next thing that I'll show you is the axial image, and I think this oftentimes is more difficult just because it's a plane that you're not necessarily used to, uh, but you can imagine these are just slices that are going up and down into like your belly. So this is going to be our liver right here. We're going to be seeing our vessels that are going to be our portal veins, there's going to be two of them, our hepatic veins, dumping into our IVC. If we were to follow this all the way down, we'll follow this, follow this, follow this. Uh, this is going to be our IVC, and then it bifurcates. And then here were our renal veins that are coming in. We're going to have our aorta right here, which is our major vessel. In the abdomen, it's going to have branches of our celiac trunk. You're going to have branches of your SMA. And then your IMA is going to be a little bit smaller, but we'll see if we can find it. And so that, that was your IMA right there. So it kind of comes off right below the renals come off. All right, so those are going to be our, our major vessels. This is a lot more that we can talk about, but those are just going to be our major ones. This is going to be our stomach right here. And remember how we saw the duodenum had a course that was kind of like going down in our first and second, then third and fourth, something like that. We'll see what it looks like here. 
So your stomach is going to come down here. This is going to be the start of your first portion, your second portion. Come to, well, I'm scrolling down right now, so it's in a vertical plane. And then it's going to be coming across. And so this is going to be our third portion of the duodenum. So it's going to be coming across horizontally. And then we're going to be having our fourth portion of the duodenum. Then you kind of lose the bowel, and that's okay. What you're going to be looking at just grossly what the bowel looks like in terms of our small bowel, and just kind of breaking it up into quadrants. So all this centrally, you can assume that's going to be our small bowel. Um, and you differentiate that from our, our colon based off of when you go upwards. So you just find the colon. The colon is going to be a lot easier. You should be able to track it in every single patient. just may be a little bit more difficult. I'm going to walk you through. So currently I'm scrolling up. I'm scrolling up, and then I lose the bow. Well, then I scroll down. Okay, so there it continues. Now I'm scrolling up, and I lose it again. So I scroll down, and then now it loops back around. So there's sigmoid colon. And it's, I'm still scrolling up, and then I lose it. So then I scroll back down. And so I'm now what you see here, I'm just going up and down, and this is where it attaches. So this is going to be where it attaches into our descending colon. So it's going up, up, up up, and then here's going to be our splenic flexure, then I'm scrolling back down, remember how, it, when you remember on the chrono, it kind of had that loop that went down almost like a U, so that's why I'm scrolling down, and I'm going to have to scroll all the way back up, and this is going to be our hepatic flexure, and coming down, 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 it's our descending colon, and this is where um, our ilium attaches in. You'll be probably asking, oh, where's our appendix? And oftentimes the appendix is very difficult to see. Uh, in this situation, it, it may or may not be difficult to see depending on if you've seen appendicitis before. But actually this whole thing right here isn't bound. That's actually the appendix. And the reason why we know that is because we lose it, right? An appendix is essentially a loop of bowel that's blind ending. This is a very, very abnormal appendix. It's appendicitis uh, with the appendicolith. But I won't talk any more about that because I just want to give you the very overview. This is going to be our liver, like we were saying before, our hepatic and portal veins. And then our pancreas, what it's going to look, is going to be looking a little bit different. So pancreas, our unsnit is down here. It kind of scrolls up. You see the head and then the body. I'm still scrolling up and I'll scroll down a little bit and that's going to be our tail. So, you know, with CT in general, you're going to have to be scrolling up and scrolling down. So when you follow someone, it may be harder to do to follow them through that. But you're just going to have to scroll up and down when you're looking at it yourself. Okay? This is going to be the spleen like I was talking about before. If you're trying to determine whether or not someone has splenomegaly or hepatomegaly, that's going to be much easier. Or it's going to be how you measure it on a, a coronal view. Um, here is going to be our, our kidneys. Um, and then here is going to be our ureter. So we can follow it all the way down. I'm having my mouse cursor where the ureter is. You're just going to follow it slowly down, still there. And then it'll dump in into our bladder. So this is our UVJ right here. You don't see it very specifically, but if you had a little bit higher resolution, it's probably going to be that, that guy right there. And this is going to be our bladder and then our uterus right here. The ovaries are going to be these guys right here, so they're going to come off and kind of drape over our iliac vessel. So this is our ovary, this guy right here. It kind of comes out like arms. And again, on this side, it's going to be that right there. Almost looks like small bowel, but if you follow it, it's not going to connect with anything else. Okay, so those are our major organs of uh, the CT scan. There's a lot of vessels, there's a lot of different other aspects that you're going to be looking at, but with, as a med student or as an intern, what you're really going to be looking for is there free air, is there any type of dissection, is there some laceration, some very large mass, and you know, typically we're going to be putting numbers to where they are, but at least you'll know what these different organs are. So then you'll be able to kind of be able to see it on different planes. There is a sagittal plane as well. And really what I use that for is going to be bones. But I'll save that for another video. This is just kind of giving you a very basic overview of the different organs within a CT scan. Be sure to check out medicalbasics.com for more educational resources like our HMP notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.